an honor to be here, especially this Second Amendment time. I love this. Um, I come here today as a, an American citizen who is truly concerned by the daily attacks on our Bill of Rights and our liberty. This country was founded by nothing less than a miracle. It's founded by individuals who revolted against a tyrannical government that united a movement that against all odds from this great country. And these principles we're going to be talking about today, it may sound like we're a little frustrated and angry. There's a little bit of truth to that, but a more optimistic, because I know what our founders fought and died for, that laid the groundwork for us if we stand up for that. This country is found about individuals that believed life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. They believed that, that we're endowed by our creator with certain noble rights. And they knew exactly where they came from. That made you and me the sovereign. We were created by, we were created by, by our, our, our creator. We're endowed with, the, with these rights. We're the sovereign. And the question we have to ask ourselves is, what is the true legitimate role of government? Is it our master or is it our tool? Because knowing that perspective and putting you in the position of where you're supposed to fit in that realm makes a complete difference in how things act. See, my story is not like any others, like multiple stories in this country. I was raised in an inner, inner city part of a working class neighborhood by a single mother. She had me she was about 19, 20 years of age. She raised myself and my younger brother. Um, she cleaned houses, the secretary, she worked hard. But her rules were very simple in my house. Go to church, go to school, or kick your butt. And that allowed us to pursue our dreams. She never, ever, ever pushed away our flame. She encouraged us. I wanted to be a doctor my whole life. And it's a testimony to her as the first person in my family to get a scholarship to go to college in 1978. My younger brother became, I always like to joke on this, he, he actually messed up and became an attorney. So, <laughs> uh, both of them actually passed away about three years ago. My brother in an accident, my mother with cancer. And uh, having no father figure in our household, she had to do both roles. So when we hear about this kind of, this, this, this society, that the government's going to replace the family. That's no. It doesn't have to happen if there's no father. Because what happens today is we have these central planners who believe something's completely different than our founders. They don't get that when an individual is in charge of their lives, in charge of their decisions, society's at its best. Today we have that backwards. Today we have the individual or the collective is our decision here, right? And today's society, the so-called leaders, believe the collective is superior to the individual. We're the first and only country ever founded upon the individual to superior to the collective. Because again, we are the sovereign. And a legitimate role of government is to protect our naval rights. The moment it infringes on those, it's not illegitimate. Those core beliefs, those core foundations is what our founders fought and died for. Those 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence, they pledged their life, their fortune, and their sacred honor. And by never, ever losing their honor, we gained a nation. So that's, that's how, that, this is why this thing to me is so clear what we have to do. We have to understand the position we are in. If we wait for uh, privileges from the government, then we are serfs and slaves to them. In, the, in this country today, you work a roughly a hundred, uh, roughly 16 days of labor to pay for your annual grocery bill. And yet you work 116 days to pay your tax bill. It's, it's mind-boggling. The government is borrowing, borrowing $50,000 a second. And they're borrowing 44 cents of every dollar. So they're spending, what, 90,000 a second. In North Carolina, the average income, median income is about fifty to forty-five thousand a year, with unemployment above nineteen, about nine percent. At the same time, the federal government employs over two million full-time employees with compensation packages of over one hundred and thirty thousand dollars a year. See, these kind of numbers, when you put it in context, goes back to our question again. We asked at the very beginning today: What is the role of government? It appears we are their slaves, we are their serfs, we're not the master. It's these kind of simple motivations that have motivated me to seek the, the position of the United States Senate from the sovereignty of North Carolina. 
It's, it's to understand the role of government. And so when we have them, we got that passion in our belly, the passion in our, in our belly that our founders had to stand up for these kind of principles. Because these principles are nothing unless we have the guts to stand up for them. And that's what I'm coming to you guys today, is this message is, is so important. I look at my seven children. Myself, I have, um, my wife, Jordan, I've been married 25 years. I have seven children, six girls and a boy. Um, they are my joy of my life. And, and I cannot look in their eyes years from now when they're going to say, Dad or Gramps, where were you in that fight? Where were you in the battle over liberty? You talk a good, a good talk on the table, but where were you? And that's why we have to step out. I've delivered over 9,000 babies. I see the little heartbeat starting at the moment of conception, you know, about 31 days later. Heart neural activity about 19 days. I see that first birth, that first breath, and that first scream. And we're going to pass on a country, depends on the numbers you read, between $127 trillion of unfunded liabilities to $222 trillion of unfunded liabilities. On unconstitutional functions, anyway. These numbers are astronomical. So, this, this part about you know, put out these, uh, again, putting these problems out there. I don't want to be a pessimistic. They're a challenge. Our founders went to war against the greatest uh, military bite at the time, and 3% of our founders went to war over liberty. The total tax burden was less than 1%. Henry said, give me liberty, give me death. And we're having this the Leviathan on us getting involved telling us what kind of health care, how much taxes, the NDA over and over and over again. So the time is right now, I think I'm challenging the question I've asked myself. I'm asking you. Do we have the courage, the fortitude our founders had? Do we have the strength to not worry other people think about us? Because history books can be written about this time, about what happens today. Where is this, what's it going to say about you and me as an individual? Jefferson says the Constitution is only a blank piece of paper when you go between the lines. The true keepers of the Constitution is we the people. That's what Washington said. So now I'm challenging us to pledge our lives, our fortune, and our sacred honor. If we're unshakable with that, if we're unshakable with that, then we'll get the proper perspective again that we're the sovereign. So I'm asking us to understand this thing. What makes the American dream so phenomenal is yours is different than mine. They want to divide us. They want to divide us. Again, our, our motto is keep pluralism from them. From many come one. I'm talking before about this, this one thing about a one metal strong. Get multiple metals, make it to an alloy. It's unbreakable. That's our American culture. That's who we are. Let's invite everybody here to live under our rule of law. Our founders understood the J.O. Christian principles of liberty, sound money, free markets, all controlled by a government that is a constitutional republic, not a democracy. Democracy leads to mob, leads to majority rule. When you start looking at the collective and what's best for the collective and the quintiles and the percentiles and these little hyphens, then you dehumanize you and me. When you look at the individual, you humanize us. And that's what to understand where that comes from and what the role of government is in that. So, to, to continue, if we have the guts to stand up for the American dream to restore for the next generation, if we allow the next, to us to hold on to the tenacity found in our founding documents, if we never back down on the, what those financial principles are, if we understand the freedom, the freedom that comes from responsibility and liberty, if we understand that, and fight for that in word and in action. Thank God it's not bullets and knives. Thank God our founders are the ones who did that. We just have to fight for what's in that written piece of paper. If we do that, the paradigm shift happens in the next election cycle. It, it's done that quickly. See, this is why we're doing this. This is why we got off our couch. This is why we're going to not be selfish living under our personal dream. We cannot, we must not, in vain that what our founders fought and died for go away. We understand what true free markets are. It's not cronyism what's going on today. We can't let these people have the words and make the definitions. 
We have to understand what the definitions are, and we are taken with that word. Do not be afraid to go places you're not supposed to go. They don't want us to divide us. Let's unite. But the core, example, I'm, I'm an OBGYN, pelvic surgeon. Um, when I'm operating, blood can flow out of, out of the heart about, um, at, a, at a C-section or a type of hysterectomy, 22% of the heart but every minute. The first rule would have a blood vessel. The first rule, you should put your finger on it. Then you go back to your financial principles and get your clamp, cut it, uh, clamp the right clamp. Watch out things around that. We are bleeding right now at $50,000 a second of borrowed money. We are bleeding now at moral corruption. We are now uh, at, at gov uh, government corruption. And we're all saying it's okay. We're hearing this. We are in a, tr a triage mode that has to be done now. We were started by non-politicians. Five founders of their independence were doctors. Not one was a career politician. The last 50, 60, 100 years of career politicians got us this. I want this debate to be clear in the primary. The rule of law. Because freedom, freedom, liberty, only occurs in a contractual society. Compulsion and coercion crushes the individual. Our contract's the Constitution. Because freedom is going to reign when we stand up for the rule of law, not the rule of men. So I'm asking you today to please, please stand by me, work with me, because it's going to take a team effort. We need, your, we need your effort, your time, your money, your, your connections, and get this message out. Because the message of freedom the message of liberty is worth fighting for. History has proven that. We're not going to sit around and let central planners tell us what freedom is. We're not going to sit around anymore. And I know it's caught on fire. We understand what liberty is. So let's not, let's not run away from our founders. Let's run to them. But again, people want to make that old-fashioned. No. Those core principles are timeless Anything other than our financial core principles are when men were slaves, when men were part of the cogs of the wheels. We're the only place, again, where individual reigns from the, well, freedom is from the individual because we know we're endowed by our Creator. I'm begging us to think this thing through, clearly, to understand this. Again, this is because I know, I know, will change. History is proven, no matter how long it takes, liberty eventually wins. Let's decide to go on the team of victory, which is liberty. I really thank you for this. I'll answer any questions. If you have any. Um, I guess, like, what would be your kind of first moves um, once elected as U.S. Senator? What would be your first decisions? What takes priority first in fixing the state? Fixing the state. So that's a different thing. You talk about a federal position fixing the state. I would, when I win, I'm going to be a senator as if there's no 17th Amendment, where I'm a, I'm a literally an ambassador from the sovereign state of North Carolina, holding the federal government responsible for their 18 enumerated functions. So is there one issue? To me, there's so many issues. But without sound money, you can't have a sound economy. Fed has to be, has to be uh, audited, if not eliminated. We have to get back to the principles of, look at the idea of some questions going on right now. They're arguing over how much of a raise we're supposed to have, how much money they're supposed to get more. See, this is the thing is, I want to hold back every single bill. We talked about, I was talking about, about, about the bills. They don't write them. They don't even read them. My core will be, we're going to write, we don't need more legislations. We need legislation to get rid of the legislation we have. Okay, so we don't need more better ideas. We don't need policy to social engineer our lives. And that's the thing that's really interesting is, they social engineer our lives and then exempt themselves. Okay? So when we look about this is, so what is it? There is so much stuff. I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to correct the root of it. The root of it is everything that's unconstitutional gets zero support. Then I go back to use the bully pulpit of the Senate and go back to the state and go, state, North Carolina, you are duty bound by Madison to be in a position between any unconstitutional act, NDA, Obamacare, what name them off. State, have the guts to stand through and do what you got to do because that's your responsibility. Uh, 
are there any particular agencies <clears throat> which should be uh, eliminated as unconstitutional? Every single one that is not there, EPA, OSHA, just start going on the alphabet list. Because again, they're only, this is where, this, I think the biggest problem is the Congress is supposed to make every single law. They've advocated their role. They have advocated all funding in the House. We can defund every unconstitutional act tomorrow. So why do we have a government run today by executive orders, judicial activists, and again, policy wonks? Because the legislative branch has advocated the rule. The House will represent us. The Senate represents the states. So we're not holding our, and I'm holding me, the responsible, our representatives accountable. We keep on letting the same people over expecting a different outcome. That's insanity. So IRS, 60th Amendment, that's getting your labor. That's getting your product. And I, did, I, just, I know this sounds academic, but in 1788, a guy named Robert Aids and the Marcus wrote, and they're discussing income tax. He said, we can never have an income tax. If you do, in the future, you have an armed, you have an armed army coming to your house and taking your property. Healthcare, Matt Jefferson said, if you ever let the government decide what you're gonna eat and what medicine you're take, you'll be a tyrannical state of government. See, these issues are, these principles are timeless. So when you look at Article 1, Section 8, there's 18 functions of government. Anything that's not there goes away. That's why the sequester thing is a joke. It has nobody's any guts to come and say, that's unconstitutional. And my speech may have been, may have been, may have been too passionate, but I'm passionate. Okay. So it's just, it's just, I want to get the articulation of that. I don't want to get so confused and all this kind of stuff because it really is easy. They want to make it complicated. Freedom is beautiful. You're born in a free nature. Locke said the only role of government is to protect one's property. That's your mind, your body, your labor. Reverse that and you're a serf, a slave. And those poor souls that are on the government toll in their heart, they don't want to be there, but they're told they can't be there. They cannot, they have to live there. What if they had all their money? What if they had a local government? What if they had social services at home where the church is going to take care of people? The federal government takes 87 cents of every social spending and gives 13 to the recipient. I'm, help, I'm, I'm in trouble. You'd help me out. My mother and I, actually, when I was third grade, I went to three third grade who we were homeless for a weekend living in a car. She found a friend, took us up, did her stuff, we got home. Okay, but that's because you had a local neighborhood. When you wait for the check, you're a slave to somebody else. Amen. This, is, this is something I know that sometimes my friend Riley crazy here, but the federal government has a constitution of what it can do, and it's enumerated. In fact, Madison laughs. He says, why do we have to worry about general fair and proper and innocent and proper clause? It's ridiculous. It's enumerated. The structure of the, con of the contract, you would not have an all-purpose elastic cause if it was not enumerated. So he says very clearly. So it's what it can do. The Bill of Rights, he didn't want a Bill of Rights. Because what's going to happen is, people are going to think, the government's going to think, that's all the rights you get when your rights are unlimitless. But Jefferson and Henry really wanted one. Because they want to say, these aren't limited to what you have, but this is just a show. And what they articulated was the Bill of Rights are written down. These are natural rights you can never touch. And all of them are hammered in our country today. And all ten of Karl Marx's laws, planks, are law in our land and our state today. Every single one of his ten planks are law in our country today. And we're arguing over if you can speak in your church, if you can open the right to bear arms. If you, have, uh, if you have due process, if you have individual liberty in the Ninth Amendment, state sovereignty in the Tenth Amendment, those are debated, not debated, they're scoffed upon. And our leaders just turn their back. When they run for office, I'm the constitutionalist. I'm the liberty lover. But when they're in, Craig, come on now, you don't understand the details of this. You're not smart enough to understand this. So the Constitution, seven, eight pages, the Decker's Independence is a page. I can read those. The IRS code is around three to four million words, not counting the Dodd-Frank bill, not counting the, uh, 
the new Nassau's health care plan. So when are we going to accept, or why do we keep on accepting our senators who have three minutes to vote for a bill, vote for a bill, and not read it? They got the fiscal cliff bill, 126 a.m., and signed it at 129 a.m. And we say it's okay? No. The House is controlled by the R's, and we're not defunding anything? There's been no, no budget for four years, and that's by law you've got to have one? That's true. So, so I want to ask us, who are you? Who am I? We're the sovereign. We're made in his image. Madison clearly, clearly discussed the, the definition of sovereign and three definitions. The word, three, 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 definitions, three definitions. A territory, a government, and a person. He said, every single writing put together, it's always the individuals, the sovereign, never the government or the territory, ever. I know this wave is flying across this place. We know it. We know we have to protect life from the moment of natural conception to natural passing. We know we have to protect liberty and then in pursuit of your American dream. See, we're here to save the American dream for the next generation. We're going to improve and change. Do what? Change back to the foundational principles will allow all of us to pursue. What if all of us had our money that we worked on labor for? The economy booms. We're living off Lazaia Fair economics from the 1870s to the 1910s. We're still living off of that. This is crony capitalism. Don't let any side pick what your definitions are. We go back to what the words mean. Capitalism has two basic types. You invent a better widget, you try to sell the free market, the free market will decide that. Or you go to the government to get a law to regulate your competitors' widgets. What's true capitalism? They don't believe in the visible hand. They don't believe in free markets. They don't believe in free enterprise. You know, we don't have to worry about what windmill or what kind of power. The free market will decide that. We got geniuses in garages right now thinking things up, but they're skewed because they get grant money. They got to do clean energy or do this or do that. You got to go all day on this kind of stuff. But the principle is very simple. You and I as individuals must make a decision to stand firm in the truth. Once we do that, and we run for office at every level, and then hold them accountable, I lie this way, I don't do what I say when I win, I don't get a second term in the story. And then you go after me while I'm there. I was going to represent us. And you don't need you don't, don't my decision on policy, you don't need my decision when I think about something. You want to know why I stand for the rule of law. When I say yes or no to what's written on a piece of paper, then when I say no, then I'm a fraud. I'm a fraud. And I want you not to hear from me, you don't understand the complicity of this. I'll use the prison, the Constitution, every single time I make a decision. Anything else? Anyone? Mitt Romney was asked if he would cut a trillion dollars from the federal budgets. And that number comes from the size of the deficits. And he answered, oh no, that would hurt the economy. What would you say? Cut, cut. We all know, again, historical facts have proven anytime there's less taxes, it's a better economy. And again, I go back to the spending. What are they spending? See, this is, this is what our people in Washington are doing now, and, and local levels at some extent, is they're not arguing over what the rule of law is. They're arguing how to divide the plunder. My job is to put my finger on the blood vessels bleeding. I want no more plunder. None. They should have a very boring job. Okay? We should know who the president is. They should be an executive of law. Congress must step up and do their responsibility, and House legislators must step up and do their responsibilities. Because my other question is, why are they there then? Why are, they, why are they exempt from inside trading? Why are they exempt from pension plans? Why are they exempt from health care? Because they are the guardian elites, like Plato said, and we're replaceable numbers. So wait till the whole health care kicks in. Wait 10 months from now. I wrote a paper on that four years ago. People thought it was insane. It's almost $7 trillion of, an, of more than fund liability, let alone control of your life. So I'm begging you. I know you're here. I know you guys are activists. I already understand that. 
is I'm begging you never to compromise. Hold me accountable because I'm holding you accountable. If you tell me you're some conservative constitutional group and I come and speak and I hear you start talking about things that are compromised, I'm going to hold you accountable because I, I, I'm not here to, to win an office. I'm here to represent the truth because I'm a fallen person. I'm going to make mistakes all the time. We can go back, Greg, here's the law. Go back to what we know. It's written. Again, our founders put it on a piece of paper on purpose because the English Constitution was not on paper. It was oh, just this issue was precedent. The story decisis. All that kind of stuff we hear right now. That's not what they put it on there. They put it on a piece of paper. The preamble of the Bill of Rights is the greatest thing in the world. In Greg Brandon's language, you people in the future understand what we wrote down is not what we meant to be. This is what it means. So again, I thank you for coming to the Bill Day today. I thank you so much for this. And I really, really look forward to you standing by us and working together. It's gregbrandon.com. Uh, we need money. We need people. We need message spreading. Thanks.